Hello, welcome back to my top 10 picks from this year's 7 day roguelike challenge. We're almost at the top of the list now, this one is my number 2 choice. It was very close between this and number 1. This is Runner Puncher. And it basically does exactly what its name says it does. Hopefully it'll make more sense as we get going, here we go. Um, so, you can see straight away that unlike many roguelikes, we don't have um, a sort of fog of war to reveal the level of the the layout of the level. <laughs> uh, it's all entirely revealed, and we move either with the mouse or with keyboard. I actually prefer keyboard, so I'm going to be doing that. And you will notice straight away that the level is pretty busy. It's full of stuff dollar signs and bits of punctuation lying around. These are items, money and enemies, as you might expect. But they're all just littering the levels. And the way Runner Puncher works is that you move along this line. So rather than just one space at a time, with enemies also moving a space, you move along a line here. And if you're not interrupted, you can get to your destination tile straight away in one move. But if you're interrupted by an enemy or an item or anything like that, you won't go all the way. So let's have a look at what these items are. There isn't really an inventory system here. Any item you pick up will be equipped straight away. And some of the items lying around are bad. Um, it tells you at the bottom of the screen what everything is. So this one is Helm of Life plus one to our life. So that's beneficial. Uh, this thing here is Fine Shoes. I think that's more or less what we're already wearing, so it doesn't have any particular effect. This enemy here, the P, is Poison Wizard. And the enemies are one of the interesting things about this game. Um, from observations, the way it seems to work is that a particular enemy type will have its own active abilities which it uses while it's alive. So wizards tend to teleport around, for instance. Um, but there will also be an effect that triggers on death, and that seems to be randomised from game to game. In this game, um, it seems that wizards are poison wizards, which means when you kill them, they will explode into a puddle of poison. Um, they could also be web wizards, which would explode into webbing when they die, or they could have a knockback effect, or various other things on death. So individual enemy types don't function the same way from one play of Runner Puncher to the next, and that's one of the interesting things. The other thing is, you're not really here to fight enemies. Um, you're here to get to the exit, which, if you look carefully, is sort of on the western side of that top right-hand room. Uh, there's a little blue down arrow. Um, and that, basically, is the aim of the game, to run through. And... Fight enemies when you have to, but otherwise grab useful items, grab money, and then you can use the money to stock up on more items between floors. So in theory, um, it should be entirely possible to get through the game without actually fighting anything. Although I've never managed to get through a single floor without fighting anything. They usually swarm upon me very quickly. So anyway, that's enough talking. Let's get started. So I'll head for the Helm of Life here. And you can see straight away these two poison wizards teleported right around me. So um, since they have poison effects, I don't really want to kill them if I can avoid it. This thing is a summoning knight. Summons others when it dies. So that's a particularly horrible on death effect. So I don't want to hit that knight because it will summon other enemies. So I'll try and dodge around the poison wizards like this. I don't really want the fine shoes, but it doesn't hurt me to grab them. What's this? Over here, fine helm, that doesn't benefit me either. So I'll go for this cash. And then through the door. What's this? Gold. And a fine cape, don't really need that. But I'll try to dodge around to the western side here, I think. So you can see, touching that item that was on the floor stopped me in my tracks. But I should now be able to go most of the way over there. Yeah. I stopped because um, that P lunged into my path. Heavy Helm, definitely don't want that. That actually reduces our movement by one. And this is this is the game. This is how it works. It's a very simple idea um, that you're, you're basically sprinting through the levels and trying to cope with the types of enemies you're facing. 
Oh man, these wizards are multiplying. Um, very, very simple idea, but executed really well once you get used to the weird movement system. And uh, that was the obstacle for me. I'm going to have to take out this wizard, I think. There we go. And the summoning knight. Oh, he summoned millions of poison wizards and they killed me. So, we'll start over. Um, a quick restart is always nice. What enemies have we got now? Deadly knight. So this time, knights do extra damage to others when it dies or attacks strong armor and weapons. So instead of summoning, they're just deadly. Um, don't want that fine helm. I'll try and dodge around the top here, I think. Grab some cash and try to evade the knights. What's this N here? Nullify a wizard. So again, wizards teleport around, um, but when it dies, it nullifies nearby tiles. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I've never come across it before. And this this is the game. I mean, this is the gameplay right here. This is how it plays. Um, so as I say, very simple concept, but to me, at least, it works really, really well. Um, it took some getting used to. The movement feels weird for a while. I remember when I started, before I got how it worked, um, I was thinking, why don't you just let me move one space at a time like a normal roguelike? Uh, but that's not the point. It's all about this sort of sprint towards the end of the level. Okay, I'm getting over here. Oh, God. I'm going to have to take out this thing. Or try to. Um, you can see up in the top right, I've already lost one of my four hits. So I don't feel great about this. Uh, dodge around it. Okay. And because the game is basically all about movement, really the only controls you need... Are uh, instantly recover one health. Very nice. The only controls you need are either just clicking with the mouse if you're using mouse control, or if you're using keyboard like me, you use the four directional arrows and enter. That's that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, the exit's down at the bottom, so we might as well make a dash for that. Again, some of the items actually have negative effects. So this one, for instance, uncomfortable shoes will give us a minus one knockback, uh, which we do not want. There we go. Ah, I accidentally skipped the shop there, but never mind. Um, all right. I uh, don't really want that potion. Oh, no, I do, actually. I didn't realise I'd taken another injury, so we'll go over there, grab the potion. What's this? Knuckles of Charming. Decrease shop prices by $5. That actually might be worth having. Um, if we look at ourself, it'll tell us what we've got. Helm of life, no armor, no footwear, knuckles of defense plus one defense. Yeah, let's go for these charming knuckles. Um, and then hopefully we'll get a better price when we go shopping. What's this K? Knockback noob! Oh, knocks back others when it dies or attacks. Yeah, we weren't in range of, it, range of its knockback, but that can be really annoying if you're fighting something that has knockback and multiple hits. Um, yeah, so this is Runner Puncher. Again, there isn't a lot else to show you because you've pretty much seen the way the whole game works. And I don't think it's a very long game, but it is well worth playing just because once you get your head around the way it works, it's a really unusual and surprisingly addictive game. I find that each time I die, I just restart straight away without really thinking about it. I just dive straight back in, which is always a good sign of a game I'm really enjoying. So this is my number two choice from my top 10 7 DRLs this year. It's called Runner Puncher. As always, I will put a link to the game below so you can check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching and rejoin me next time when we will check out my number one top 7 DRL from this year's challenge. See you then.